I am a huge community fan, so it sucks to say that the movie is looking like it's going to be a failure. The show has faced many hurdles in the past, and it looks like the movie is going to be the hardest obstacle it has to overcome. I believe that is why the movie is going to fail. The show is just cursed. The first three seasons of Community is one of the best things to ever come out of network television. It started out as an ordinary sitcom with solid characters, but over time they started doing higher and higher concepts that elevated the genre. The homages and crazy ideas aren't what made the show good. It sure did help, but what separated action-packed episodes like Modern Warfare and movies like The Transporter is that Community had good writing with interesting and flawed characters. No matter what episode you are watching, you're gonna get a satisfying story that has heart. It doesn't matter if they're helping Abed deal with his mother leaving him alone on Christmas, we're dealing with the mystery of Annie's missing pen. Every episode has a heartwarming lesson or message that the audience can reflect on. Abed is better. You are all better than you think you are. You are just designed not to believe it when you hear it from yourself. Add in the clever writing and jokes and you get one of the greatest shows ever made. This isn't a show you could have playing in the background because there are so many clever and layered jokes, it is hard to miss some of them. But maybe when Jeff gets here we could talk to him as a group about his tardiness. Oh come on. Don't use that word around, eh, Ben? The first three seasons were running smoothly, but little did we know there was more going on in the background. After season 3, Dan Harmon, the showrunner and creator, was fired by Sony for his erratic behavior. He would drink while working, have writers stay late, and would constantly switch between being a perfectionist and procrastinator. The conspiracy episode, for example, was written right before they started shooting. He actually wrote a whole conspiracy. Yeah. about night school no, and literally then the when night you, before we started shooting it. And I work in animation now where you can just make people draw stuff and we're not that ballsy. <laughs> we had human beings that had to show up <laughs> and, and go into makeup and we were like, man, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we wrote ourselves into a corner and then while we were trying to burr our way out of it, I guess you have to shoot this because it's Thursday now. This shows how great of a writer Dan and his team are, but it wasn't professional enough for network TV. Another example of this is the Dungeons and Dragons episode. It was only made because it was turned in right before a shooting. Sony had to have a special meeting and said, there's a lot of goblin in this script. <laughs> and one of them said, we wish you had turned this in on time so we could have thrown it in the garbage. By the way, that episode was removed from Hulu, so if you're rewatching the show, you should find a way to watch it because it's one of the best episodes in the series. This sucks because new people finding the show won't even know it exists. This on top of the constant fighting with Chevy Chase had him fired. Chase was known to be very difficult to work with. Chevy had a successful career in the 80s and thus felt like he was better than everyone else. He hated the hours and generally did not want to be there. In his world, he was like, I'm a movie star. I've been a movie star for a long time and this isn't good enough for me and uh, I don't like being here. But that's just my theory. Hmm. But I don't know that what, what happened. So anyway. What was well, I think um, there was probably exactly what you just said. Uh, <laughs> I d uh, he was someone that did not want to be there for the hours that we were keeping. And the hours were long. There was no doubt about that. Pierce was very much based on Chevy, as he was old school and very much homophobic and racist without realizing it. Yeah, I, I, I walked away from a conversation with Chevy and it was reported to me later. I think that's, that, that's the important part because it wasn't really for my benefit. As I was walking away, Chevy said, I wonder what it's like to be fat and gay. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, there was the incident where Chevy used the n-word on set. He was concerned with the direction his character was heading towards and said, what am I going to say, the n-bomb next? But instead of bomb, he said the whole word, hard er. That is why he barely shows up in season 4, as he was pretty much checked out of the series. It is a shame too, because Pierce is one of the most funniest and out-of-pocket characters on the show. Of course, this is when he's acting out what the writers wrote for him. Personally, I think his improvised physical comedy is not very funny. <laughs> This is not even one of the worst reasons why Dan Harmon was fired. In 2018, it was also revealed that Dan Harmon sexually harassed one of his writers. He liked one of the writers on his team, and when she didn't reciprocate those feelings, he bullied her. His apology was sincere, and she ultimately forgave him, but all of this in tandem was why he was fired. 
One of the biggest hurdles Community had was surviving season 4. The fourth season is considered one of the worst seasons of Community. The new showrunners tried their best to mimic what Community was, but it ended up feeling forced. The new writers didn't know how to write for these characters, and instead just pushed high concept ideas that weren't earned. They kept pushing to make the show as absurd as possible. That is part of the community formula, but it is missing the cleverness of the humor, characters, and lessons. The reason for the drop of quality wasn't only due to Dan Harmon being fired. Several others left community after season 3. This includes producers Neil Goldman and Garrett Donovan, Starburn's actor as well as writer Dino Stamtopoulos, directors Joe and Anthony Russo, and several other key creative figures. The show was getting low viewership, which resulted in many time slot changes which caused even less ratings, and the network was constantly asking them to rewrite jokes to that were deemed too offensive. Despite what many people say, Dan Harmon staying on wouldn't have made season 4 better, like so many people claim. It would have been better, but there would have been even more hurdles to make season 4 happen. It wasn't all bad. Jim Rash, who also plays the Dean, wrote Basic Human Anatomy, which I would consider to be one of the best episodes of Community. It's the episode where Troy and Ovid switch bodies. It's funny, it has heart, and it finally breaks up Troy and Britta, which was a relationship that just felt weird and awkward. It also explores deeper into Abed and Troy's relationship. I also like how it shows a moment where Jeff plays into Abed and Troy's childish games. It is a nice callback to earlier seasons where it is used to show that Jeff truly cares about Abed and Troy. Basic Human Anatomy is one of the only episodes in season 4 that felt like classic community. It makes sense as Jim Rash is an award winning writer and also directed many later episodes of community. He is someone who fundamentally understands what makes the show and characters work. Another person who has a strong understanding of these characters and is also an amazing writer is Megan Gans. She was responsible for writing some of the greatest episodes of Community. She wrote the Bottle episode, Cooperative Calligraphy, which was about Annie's missing pen in season 2, and Basic Lupin Neurology, which is the CSI episode about the study group's murdered yam in season 3. Both of these episodes are in the top 15 rated Community episodes on IMDb, and for good reason. It is also theorized that Dan hated the Bottle episode and humiliated Gans in front of everyone for it. I was on set with one of the episodes that I'd written and the showrunner wasn't on set. The showrunner w didn't like it and said to me in front of the whole writer's uh, room, is this what you think TV is? And just kept hammering me on that. And I was like, I don't even know what you don't like about it. And then it was like one of the most popular episodes of the show ever. Amazing. She could be talking about Modern Family, another show she has worked on. But if this is about Community and the Pen episode, then it shows that she could write a good episode of Community without the help of the showrunner. She wrote the Halloween episode, which is another solid episode in season four. It is a trope to Scooby-Doo and Halloween mysteries. The jokes are solid. <laughs> And it also explores Jeff's relationship to his dad through Pierce's father once again, which didn't feel forced. It has a similar feeling to the first three seasons. It makes sense as Megan Gans is a phenomenal writer who is currently making sure that newer seasons of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia keep the same quality as the earlier seasons. She has written or directed two to three episodes in every season after season 13, and they all have been fan favorite episodes. Season four also has some decent jokes. The German history episode, for example, shows how self-centered the group is in Greendale and makes callbacks to previous seasons. Damn it! I signed his room out! And I have a final tomorrow! They lost a pen. A lesson. What? Making the school pretend to hate us to show us that one man's hero is another man's villain. I tip my cap to you, sir. Lesson learned. Are you actually suggesting that a professor at Greendale would set up an elaborate ruse just to teach seven students a lesson? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a win. Oh my god. I've made a terrible mistake coming here. I also think it has a sweet ending of fixing up the other study rooms to give everyone the opportunity to gain a family like our study group has. It's not great community, but it's decent TV. I like to think of season 4 as fan fiction that somehow made it to be turned into real episodes. All in all, season 4 wasn't all that bad. It was mostly bad episodes, but you have to keep in mind that season 4 of community had to walk in order for season 5 and 6 to run. Without season 4, we would have never gotten the last two seasons and ultimately the movie. 
Speaking of season 5, it was a miracle NBC renewed them for another season. The cast pushed to have Harmon return as they all saw how the quality of the show dropped. Surprisingly, Sony did hire him for season 5. He was finally able to return to his show, but it wasn't everything he hoped for. He had to fix all the mistakes of season 4, and to make matters worse, season 4 was the last episode with the whole cast. By the end of season 4, Chevy Chase was pretty much checked out and barely showed up in any episodes, and he only made a short cameo in season 5. Then, Danny Glover left after the first 5 episodes of Dan Harmon's return. It was great TV, but it felt like they had to play catch up to fix the show before they could focus on deeper episodes. The introduction of Buzz Hickey and the return of Duncan was great, but they both left after season 5. This caused the group's dynamic to change once again, and by season 6 there was only 4 of the original 7 group members left. Despite this hurdle, they still delivered some of the best episodes like the Meow Meow Beans episode that shows what happens when you divide society based on how you perceive people. The writers show the impact a social media run society has on your self worth. It is very similar to the Black Mirror episode Nosedive that came out 2 years after this episode. Season 5 of Community was back at full force which made it harder for fans to accept when the show was cancelled. It seemed like all hope was lost and this was the end of Community. Even the finale for season 5 was a half finale. They didn't know if they would return, so they played it safe and did a finale where there is a looming threat that Greendale will shut down, but they miraculously save it at the end. They even made a joke that if they didn't return, it's because they were all killed in a meteor strike. We'll definitely be back next year. If not, it'll be because an asteroid has destroyed all human civilization. This is actually why there are 4 different finales in the show. There was the ambiguous finale of season 3, the real finale in season 4 where Jeff graduates, the joke finale in season 5, and then the real finale of season 6. Just like Greendale, there were constant budget cuts and they never knew if the show would return or not. After the season 5 finale, all hope was lost for the prophesized throwaway line by Abed, 6 seasons in a movie. The show's gonna last 3 weeks! 6 seasons in a movie! Just like the fake finale in season 5 where they find the money to save the school, life imitated art as Yahoo's screen saved the show by giving them a bunch of money to create the final season. The return of the show on Yahoo was amazing. It had some of the best episodes despite having a whole new group dynamic. Frankie was a way to ground the show and was an interesting character to introduce to the group's antics. They made paintball cool again and they had one of the hardest hitting finales a show could ever have. I love that I got to be with you guys. Gay. You said my life. And changed it forever. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> no time for pondering why I'm wandering on while the city play. To the ends of the earth, would you follow? Dude, that second hug always makes me tear up. It means everything. It's Jeff thanking Abed for getting the study group together in the first place and changing his life forever. You know that feeling you get when you finish a TV show and your life feels empty? Like you just lost a group of friends? That is what the audience and Jeff feels like in this moment. He accepted that this chapter of his life, the most important chapter, is over. So that brings me back to the movie. No matter what they decide to do for the movie, in my opinion, the ending won't live up to the season 6 finale. I am hoping I am wrong as Dan Harmon is writing the movie and he is a creative genius but I am not getting my hopes up. I have a general feeling that the world doesn't want the movie to happen. When the film was announced and Dan Harmon started writing it, his friend and partner in creating Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland, was cancelled and fired for inappropriately texting minors. Not only did he lose a friend, he also had a scramble to fix Rick and Morty as Justin voiced the two main characters. This had to have a mental toll on Harmon's psyche and will definitely affect his writing. To make matters worse, when the movie started filming, the writers and actors strike happened which stopped production entirely. The only explanation I have is that community is cursed. So finally, do I think the movie is going to be a failure? I think it will be a failure in the same way season 5 and 6 were failures. They both costed their networks a ton of money, but in the end they told great and profound stories. Even if the movie gets Peacock shut down the same way season 6 shut down Yahoo's screen, it will be a net positive. We will finally get the movie and hopefully The Office and Parks and Recreation will finally be put back on Netflix. I went to community college not knowing what I want to do with my life. I cut out all the toxic people I knew and started from scratch. 
It was hard, lonely, and scary, but in the end, I made meaningful connections with people who made and continue to make me a better person to this day. That is why when I found community, I felt something no other show could give me. The show is about broken people who want to improve. It makes us feel good when we see Jeff change for the better. It makes you and the audience want to change as well. Greendale has a special place in my heart, even though it's not even a real place. Just like the school, community is a place for rejects, failures, and flawed individuals to find a home. That is why I watch it on holidays, when I'm sad, when I'm happy, when I'm sick, and when I feel my best. It sounds silly, but I do see community like a group of old friends. When I meet other people who like the show, I can see that they too are someone who's dealing with issues, but ultimately trying their best. And that constantly reminds me that it's okay to be broken. No matter its flaws, I accept community because even the creator is just a broken person trying to do their best. Dan says he's worried he won't be able to live up to the fans' expectations for the movie. Despite all of his success, he still cares about the fans and he's doing the best he can for the movie. Every time the show was cancelled, or someone left the show, Dan has always bounced back to create something for us. Even if the movie makes Peacock bankrupt, or it takes 10 years to make, they're doing just that, coming back for us, the fans, one last time. And I'm excited to see what they do with it. You moved dirt around Greendale's grave. Your movie is still bankrupt, it is still unmarketable, and it is still on the permanent chopping block of anyone who has any say in its future. Yeah? Well, around here, we call that Wednesday. <laughs> I'm as high as hell, and you're about to get shot. I'm as high as hell, and you're about to get shot. I'm as high as hell, and you're about to get shot. Leonard likes this post.